Conjugation is the overlap of orbitals between the second and third carbon in 1,3-dienes. Now, the questions that we want to explore in this lecture are, what effects does conjugation have on molecules? More specifically, how exactly does conjugation affect the stability and energy of molecules? And how exactly does conjugation affect the length of the bond between the second and third carbon in our 1,3-diene? Now, to answer these questions, let's take a look at an example of our 1,3-diene. Let's look at the 1,3-butadiene. So, we label the first carbon as C1, the second carbon as C2, C3, and C4. Now, this is only one of the structural diagrams that describe our 1,3-butadiene. So, we have four different resonant forms that are shown in this diagram. Now, the question that we want to basically ask first is, what exactly is the bond length between the second and third carbon? Is this a single bond or is it something else? Now, a single bond, like the bond in an alkane, for example, a butane, has a length of about 1.53 angstroms, while the length between these two carbons in the following double bond of this alkene has a bond length of 1.53. 32 angstroms. The question is, what is the bond length between the second and third carbon? Now, experimentally, we measure that the bond length between the second and third carbon in the 1,3-diene is about 1.47 angstroms. So, it's slightly less than our single bond, but it's slightly more than the pi bond. So, that means that the characteristics of this bond lies somewhere in between the single and the double bond. The question is why? Well, the answer lies in conjugation because of conjugation. So, to see exactly what we mean, let's take a look at the following orbital diagram of our 1,3-butadiene. So, notice that not only do we have an overlap between the orbitals, between the electron densities between the first and second carbon and the third and fourth carbon, we also have an overlap between the orbitals, between these electron densities, between the second and third carbon. In fact, the electron density is not localized to these two regions, but it's localized to this entire region. So, it basically is spread out throughout these four orbitals. So, because of the overlap of these two orbitals here between the second and third carbon, these overlapping orbitals pull these two nuclei closer together, decreasing the distance between these two nuclei. Now, the decrease is not as great as the decrease in a pure double bond. And that's exactly why this distance here is between this length and this length. So, it's about 1.47 angstroms. Now, we can also visualize the fact that this bond between the second and third carbon in the 1,3-butadiene has characteristics of a double bond by looking at the following resonance stabilized structures. So, earlier we mentioned that this molecule has four resonance stabilized structures. So, one, two, three, four. Now, if we take a look at these three structures, we see that we have a double bond between the second and third carbons. And we have a single bond on the first molecule. So, because the actual structure of our 1,3-butadiene is somewhere intermediate between all these molecules, we see that the characteristics, the properties of this bond between the second second and third carbon lies somewhere in between a single sigma bond and a double bond.
So once again, conjugation leads to the decrease in length between the second and third carbon because of the overlap of these orbitals. That overlap pulls these two nuclei closer together. Now, why exactly does conjugation increase the stability of our molecule? So we know why the length of the bond decreases, but why exactly is this a stabilizing effect? So recall from quantum mechanics, whenever an electron can occupy more space, that is whenever the electron density increases, whenever there's more space for the electron density to occupy, that stabilizes the molecule, decreasing its energy. So what exactly happens here? So here we have the distribution of our electron density. The electrons aren't only stuck within this region, they can actually occupy this entire region here. So because of conjugation, the electrons can occupy more space and this is a stabilizing effect. It decreases the energy of this conjugated system as compared to its unconjugated counterpart. So to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following section. So in reaction one, the reactant is our 1,3-butadiene, a conjugated system. In reaction two, we also have a diene, but this is not a conjugated system. These pi bonds are far apart and they are not able to actually overlap. This methylene group flanks these two double bonds and they are not conjugated. So conjugated and unconjugated system. So we basically react them with H2 in the presence of a catalyst. So we allow these two reactants to undergo the hydrogenation reaction, producing these two alkanes in the process, releasing a certain amount of energy. Now, the less energy that is released, the more stable the molecule is because the lower in energy it is. So we see that reaction one releases about 57.1 kilocals of energy per mole, while reaction two, the unconjugated system releases 60.7 kilocals per mole. So because reaction one releases less energy, that implies that this molecule is lower in energy. And whenever something is lower in energy, we know that is more stable. So if we look at the following energy diagram where the y-axis is energy, we see that the conjugated system, the 1,3-butadiene, is lower in energy than our unconjugated system and the difference in energy is equal to the difference in these two values. So 60.7 minus 57.1 is equal to about 3.6 kilocals of energy is our difference. So the conjugated system is about 3.6 kilocals of energy lower than our unconjugated counterpart. And this is because of conjugation. So once again, to overview, conjugation has two important effects on our molecule. First, it decreases the length of the bond between the second and third carbon. So the length of this bond is less than the length of the sigma bond, but it's slightly more than the length of, actual, of our double bond. So the character, the quality of this bond is somewhere between the single and the double bond. Now the second effect that conjugation has is it stabilizes the molecule. It stabilizes, decreases in energy because the electron density can basically occupy more space, more volume. The electron density is distributed throughout the entire molecule instead of being localized within these two regions as in the case for our unconjugated system.